Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for joining us for one of our talks today. Today we're doing something a little unusual, and we're actually talking about a film project which hasn't yet been filmed because it's really stepping out of the box and creating a new model within the industry in terms of self-distribution and film financing. And so today we're joined by actress and filmmaker Jennifer Esposito and Mark Elenowitz, who is the CEO of Upstream. And I wanted to start by just kind of asking a little bit about the initial genesis of how this idea came together between the two of you and, and how the two of you ended up collaborating on this project, which is a film Fresh Kills that Jennifer, I know you've been working on this idea and this script for several years and trying to get made in the traditional sense and mm -hmm. saw a great opportunity to do something a little bit different. And Mark, yeah. obviously you coming from more of a tech and a finance background was really interested in how the two of you came together and came up with the idea that that is your distribution and finance model for this film. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I could say that um, it's, it's, you know, it's been like 20 years, something crazy where I had the film in mind and then you go through uh, your career and, you know, you're put into certain areas and it's like, you know, everybody likes to be, they, they put you in a box in any career and it's like, that's what you do. And, you know, you want to break out and then make a film. It, you know, that's an even a, a stumbling block that you have to get over. But when I finally got around to it and I, I thought um, I just didn't like the roles I was seeing for myself, but I also didn't I, I just didn't like the standing of women in the business. And, you know, uh, joined all the groups, went to the rallies, used my voice, you know, a tweet here and there, like power to women and and uh, the injustice and all of that. And then I realized I had to look at myself and say, but really, what are you doing? What are you doing besides complaining? Like, what, what are you doing? So I thought, you need to write, you need to write what you want. You need to step into the life that that you believe you you can have and there are things that you want to say and you know the story just do it forget about the box someone's putting you in you know what are you what are you doing to to justify that so i i really had to take a look at myself first and um when i finally got the script done you know then it was like is anyone gonna like it you know there's so many blocks and um it started to receive really, really positive, uh, feedback. And, and then I, I, you know, I was, I was, I was so excited. I had a, a an enormous meeting with a, a big streamer and I sat with, um, a female executive and she, she was like, I love this. I, this is one of the best pitches I've had in years. And I love the story. She said, but let me ask you a question because at the time I had a male director, I had two male directors that wanted to direct it, but I had a male director, not officially attached, but he wanted to do it. And I had said that to her and she said, um, why do you want to give this away? Why do you want to have someone else direct it? And I thought she said, because the pitch is up. Uh, this is your, this is, this, it's a very personal story. She said, this is obviously very personal to this is very much your work. And I said, because I know what I'm up against. I, I know, I know what I'm up against. I know what I'm looking at trying to, as an actress and people believe they, they got me pegged and to try and then go get money for not only to be a female actress, director now, filmmaker, but the, the cast is primarily women. And I knew what I was up against. And she literally did something great for me. And she said, you're right. And I thought, wow, that's wonderful. Pure honesty, because with that, at least you can use that. But I have to say what she said next really changed the whole course of this. She said to me, she said, listen, you're right. She said, it's not going to be easy. She said, and I'll tell you, being where I am at this company, you know, we're green lighting very large films with big, big names. And, you know, you would need to get a male big lead to get this in here. She said, but I believe in you. And just because like, we're not there yet, doesn't mean you shouldn't go and do this. So you go do this, go do this independently, get your money. You have investors, tell them to call me. I'll tell them how much I believe in this. And I want to see it when it's done. And 
I wrote her many, we spoke a few times after that. And I said, you really don't know what you did for me. You never really know the words that you're saying to someone and what they do. Words are powerful, I believe. And they can either push you or stop you. And, and she kind of opened the door for me to believe that I was correct. This is going to be hard, but there's, there's, that doesn't mean anything. You should go and do it. But it was also an exec of that level admitting that yes, there's still a really big issue here. So I went on my journey to try and find the, the money. And I had a lot of offers for a lot of money, but it always came back to who's your male lead. And I just thought, wow. And we, all honesty, we tried to go down that road. And the few that mean something monetarily, I, we couldn't even get it, get it near them. It's some I know personally. And it was like, Literally one agent sent to us about one guy. He's like, he's a lead. He doesn't do things like this. Like it was just, I was like, oh God, where am I? Like what? It's, and it's a beautiful role. It's, it's actually a gorgeous role, but he's not on every page. You know, it was more about the, the women um, and being heartbroken and blown away. But I'm also someone who just doesn't stop. It's almost, it's almost a hindrance. It's like at a certain point, you gotta be like, okay, you're done. Nope. I just keep going because, and also when there's such injustice, it really gets me. I, I like, I, I just don't understand it. I, I, I just don't understand it. And I try and figure out how I can understand it. And then when we do get close to one of the guys, we'd realize that we'd have to pay him like 80 times what we'd have to pay all of our girls. And I thought, I can't go out and, and, and bitch about how I've gotten paid less than all of my male co-stars and then do it to my female leads who are carrying this movie on their back. This is hard material. Like, how can I do that? So we were, we were, we were, and we were, you know, we were getting uh, funding from the, you know, small investors here and there and, and we were moving, but it would have been a real tight budget and really hard to make. And Hey, that's fine too. But uh, someone put me in touch with Mark. And when he started telling me what he was doing, it was very strange because I had pitched crowdfunding to my producers. And they were like, Jen, no, I don't think that's the way to go. And I was like, why? We need to tell people what's going on because I'll tell you another piece of this puzzle. When I heard about the, you know, the male basically green lights films. And I, I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. I had heard but I, I really didn't know how serious that was. And when I started to do some research and it's right in our, in our union, it, they, they implemented something called a diversity clause. And what that is, is like, they will give you financial incentives to put 50% diversity in your cast. And the first of the diversity listed is women. And I just was blown away. So I was like, we got to tell the people because I very much believe like the people, they have to know these things and we have to go out there and crowdfund and tell people. And, you know, I, I got into this whole thing. I mean, the last four years watching men die in the streets and, and women, all these rapes and all, like everything kind of came to the surface in the last couple of years. And you're watching and going, what the hell can I do? What can I do? And I started to really realize that, listen, our culture is shaped by our media. It's shaped by our movies. It's shaped by our TVs. It's shaped and it's, and, and the stereotypes that we make about certain cultures, that's all, a big responsibility on the entertainment industry. And I thought, I we have to do something. So that's why I was thinking crowdfunding. But when Mark came along and it was like crowdfunding, like times a thousand, like I was blown away. And I thought it, it literally me and my producers were, 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 were like, this is it we found the road. Like, you know, you're searching in the, like in the, in the woods. It was like, well, I think we see the road to back into town. Like it was, whoa, we were, we were, we were blown away. We really were blown away because it really, like we were talking about before this started, simply put, this could be an alternative route of funding for filmmakers. This could literally be an alternative route to hear all voices, all stories from every ethnicity, from women, from men, from all gender, like 
it's, a, it's enormous. It's, it's really enormous. And I know Mark can explain more about what exactly the platform does, but to me, it's a game changer. Yeah, Mark, I'd love, to, I'd love to have you kind of dive into some of the details of, of how you envision this, because the idea basically is a three and a half million dollar IPO. And and I think to, to Jennifer's point that it takes that idea of crowdfunding, but instead of getting a T-shirt and merchandise and access to see a trailer earlier, it's more about you're actually an investor in the film and you have the opportunity to share in its revenue and share in its success, success on the other side of things as well. And so how did you really work on creating this model for project, but not just as a one-off, but really thinking about the way in which you could build something that has the opportunity to shift the way in which we finance and distribute films. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Uh, we, we were looking at trying to come up with an idea of how to democratize and allow fans, the very people that watch all this content, the people that listen to music, the ones that go and, and spend their money to, to enjoy these films, why can't they be a part of it? And if you think about it, these are the fans that drive the success of these films, because ultimately it's up to the fans to watch it. So let them be a part of it and let them get close to the movement, be a part of that change, be a part of the way things are being financed in Hollywood. I mean, we saw a lot of changes over the last two years with, with COVID, where streamers are coming becoming more popular, where content is being um, not just on, on streaming, but it's also on YouTube and, and TikTok and other types of mediums. So what we looked at doing is combining securities laws with the ability to finance these films. And we built a, with the modernization of blockchain, is we were able to create a marketplace that was safe and secure for investors to be able to transact and then be able to buy into these opportunities, but have it in a meaningful way. What we saw this past year with Wall Street was something with the gamification of stocks. Uh, everybody was talking about how all of these, uh, how the hedge funds need to die and how the little guy needs to win and all of that. And we saw a lot of market manipulation on both sides. And that manipulation can't happen in the blockchain. So it's we were, went out and we built a stock exchange. We're a national securities exchange. And we're outside the United States. Uh, unfortunately, the U.S. securities laws do not allow uh, investors to be able to buy into these opportunities and trade immediately. But outside the U.S., you can. And this is where actually I give Jen credit because she's not a securities person, but she seems to know now more about securities uh, and crypto and stock trading and all that than, than most people I speak to. But it was her vision to come up with a with an NFT, which is a non-fungible token. And that's a, a term that more people are using nowadays. A year ago, nobody would even have an idea. What, what does fungible mean? But it was a unique opportunity to allow Americans to be able to participate. And as you said, they get to have perks or in the old days, you get a T-shirt or a hat. With NFTs, it's much more than that because these are actually pieces of art. Jen went out and sourced a really strong, creative, amazing female artist from Spain who built and, and designed real, truly pieces of art. And these art, this art is, is a non-fungible token that investors can purchase or fans can purchase. And it gives much more than just owning the art. It also gives you the ability to be able to get an extra in the movie if you pay enough, or you can walk the red carpet or get to get a signed uh, script. Or more importantly, it's a utility function that you can actually get a download of the movie. So it's used as much more than just a piece of art or uh, a poster, but it's actually a tool to be able to interact with the movie and become part of it. And even taking it beyond the idea that fans of the film have the opportunity to become investors in this project and to really support it in that way, do you also both look at it as a really unique opportunity in terms of the, the fact that you get the opportunity to start building that relationship with an audience and start growing the audience before you've even shot the film. You know, yeah. you're already here talking about the movie, engaging people, wanting them to be part of the conversation and the dialogue. And do you see kind of a difference in, in transparency in the way that you want to continue that dialogue throughout the entire filmmaking process as a result? Well, I mean, it's been, I, I mean, it's amazing to go into something with a fan base already is enormous. And people are rooting for you. But the, what I like about this, they're rooting for you. And, and I always get squeamish with the word fan because it makes us like this. And I'm very much like we should all kind of be equal. And I feel what this does 
is like, yes, if you are a fan, when this movie makes money, you can make money. That to me is is a different world we're looking at in the future. You know what I mean? That's a different world. Yeah, we're partners. And it's not like the powers that be make all the money and then everything else trickles down and the fans are still, you know, going and supporting. But then what do they really get? And that's why we we did make it available for everyone to be able to join with, you know, these perks and these NFTs and 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 also so there's a few different ways to be able to get involved. But that's why it was important for us to make it so everybody twenty five dollars can get involved and join this. And we and we really do believe that this pushes forward change because they also can pick like that's something I want to see. Like, for instance, the my movie is the uh, it's the female perspective of a mafia genre, which, we, which we've never seen before. I mean, think of all the mafia films and, and shows we've seen, but we really have never seen it from the female's perspective. And, you know, you can say, you know what, I want to see that. And I want to see it with those people. And, you know, it's just a, it's a completely, it opens the door to, like I said, all voices. It really, really does. And Mark, with Upstream, is this something that you see it going even beyond film and being able to utilize it in a lot of different strands within the entertainment industry? Absolutely. We're, we, we designed it to really be any type of fan engagement. It's an opportunity, as I said, for fans to be able to connect directly with the entertainer, with the content, with the movie. Uh, some of our partners and strategic advisors within our organization is Pitbull uh, and Timbaland. They're both in the music industry, uh, Mr. Worldwide. And, and what we've started to focus on, and, and that's a classic example of being able to give back. You know, These are artists that over the years... When they first started off, they were selling mixtapes out of the back of their car. And now their fans listen to their music and they get paid. So now here's an opportunity. We've created the ability for fans to own pieces of that music royalty stream. So it's basically pay to play. You listen to the music, you get paid. So you're doing this already. And it's a win-win for both sides because it allows the artist to be able to be able to share their success back to their fans and give back instead of being on that pedestal. As Jen said, you know, you got those levels, it's it's equalizing it and making everybody part of the movement and part of the creation of that content by either listening to it or, or purchasing or sharing it. And then the beauty of what we've been able to create with NFTs and with our site and with Upstream is that can all be shared virally. I mean, if we think about the power of social media, being able to be able to take that image or that 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 particular token and share it among our friends and have them listen, or in the case of Jen with the movie, to be able to share, I'm an owner, come watch it. You know, let's support it when it goes to the festivals, when it's out there, when the streamers are bidding for it, having that built in audience and the buzz, not from just from the media, but the buzz from the community that's going to watch it. That to me is a really powerful statement. So Upstream has been designed to do that with concert tours and music and films and uh, other types of royalty streams where fans not only own it and they get to see the upside and actually trade it like a stock, but they also get dividends. And it's nice to get a return on your investment. Yeah. And Jennifer, you've always utilized your voice within the industry to advocate for inclusivity. Um, you know, And even your journey of trying to make a female-led film is something that was just hitting all these roadblocks. And so for both of you, do you also see this as an opportunity for creators to have a lot more autonomy over the work that they're making and to really bring down a lot of those walls that exist to create more of a diverse and inclusive industry as well? Well, that that's the hope. It really is the hope. I mean, you hear, you know, so many people say, oh, but isn't it changing? And it's like, no, it's really not. <laughs> it's, re it's, it's just, listen, there definitely are some, some, some people that are, you know, uh, doing their thing and helping push forward. But I always go back to the funding. Whoever is funding, you're gonna come up against the same rules. You just are. It's just the way it is. So taking it out of the system, like you, you can't keep pushing new ideas into an old system. It really doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And we, we, you can beg, you can plead, you can pick it, you can riot, you can do whatever, but it's just, it's not, it's not built that way. The other road though is being paved right now with this, the, 
we're paving the road for filmmakers coming behind us so much so that we are taking 5% back of what we make and giving it to the next female driven film that's coming behind us because that's how much we believe in doing this. Like, and again, I go back to a, a broader, a broader spectrum here where it's like, you don't have to be in love with, you know, filmmaking and you don't have to be uh, in love with, you know, this story necessarily, but you should be in love with the fact that all voices and stories should matter. Like we really should, we should see the world on our screens. We shouldn't see one side of the world. We shouldn't see one size. We shouldn't see one age. We shouldn't see one group. And we have, that's why we have the problems we have that I believe that is one of the biggest issues we have is because even if you look back 10 years, like you, when you, when you realize like how much of an issue it is. When you look back 10 years, you'll be shocked. You will be shocked at the stereotypes you're looking at. I've played them. Like I, I, I you know, I've seen them, I've played them, I, I've witnessed it, and 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 we just can't keep going down that road. So any road that is an alternative, again, we're not demanding Hollywood change because it's not happening. You're, we're paving a new road here. It's just for people to understand what this means. Like I said, it's much bigger than a movie. This is, this is really a movement towards equaling the playing field. And it, sorry, Mark. I was just going to add to Jen. I mean, it's, it's you know, the, the, the changing of Hollywood, uh, as a Wall Street banker, you have a conversation with Hollywood executives or producers, and they love to talk to you because you have the capital. But we actually saw, and Jen warned me this was going to happen, and it's a good thing. I'm getting calls and doing meetings now with small independent producers that have a lot of great ideas. But I've also had calls and meetings with now some of the major studios that recognize that this is the future. They're recognizing they have to create new ways to be able to distribute their content. And to be able to allow the crowd to fund it, it makes a lot of sense. And believe it or not, the studios are not flush with cash. Everybody's always looking for money and they're always looking to offset risk. So by allowing a fan to be a part of it, it's even for the big guys, it's a win. And it's something they're starting to recognize. And they're realizing also with the ability to utilize the blockchain with NFTs and with the ability to, to create other images out of the, of the content, whether it's on set or Jen doing a, uh, a meet and greet or just uh, a check-in from when she's shooting and, and walking off the set and, and creating an NFT out of that. That type of uh, messaging and that type of instant communication is where the world is heading. And I think Hollywood's waking up to the fact that that's the future. And it obviously is a completely unique path that's that's separate to crowdfunding, but there are certain parallels when you look at that idea of bringing in an audience at earlier stages, having a dialogue, some of the content that you were literally just mentioning a second mm -hmm. ago. Um, and so was it helpful for both of you to look at a lot of the models of crowdfunding and what's been really successful for projects? You know, what have been the most successful ways in which to crowdfund and to think about that for how you wanted to create audience engagement in this realm as well? Well, Absolutely. I have been looking at crowdfunding, like I said, for a year. So the actual video that I filmed a year ago, we use, and which is so strange. And if you're into manifestation or any of that stuff, which I don't even, I don't even know if I was, I was just, this is what I, this is the road I was going on. Basically what I'm saying in this video from a year ago is exactly what we're doing now only on like steroids. Like it's just, so I had been looking at those models. Um, but again, this is, yes, it is very similar, but yes, it's also very different. Like that's where, where it, there's a learning curve. We really have to get out and really make people understand how enormous this really is for, for all industries, really. It, 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 it's, there's a learning curve. There definitely is. So as much as we can look at, look towards crowdfunding for some of those roadmaps, this is definitely like, you know, when Mark said, you're going to be the first movie we've done like this. And it's exciting, but it's also like, oh, my God, <laughs> that, you know, it's it the hardest. It's and, and and it is. It's the hard. It is. It's absolutely the hardest. Like I have friends that hear me speak about it all the time. And they're still like, OK, so so how does it work again? It's like it, it's 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 mind numbing because 
I get it so fully and I see how much it could change, but I know that once it wins and we start moving in, this is going to be like, this is the thing to do. Like I said to Mark, you're going to be getting calls from everyone. And it, it, it kills me a little bit that the big guys are like, Oh, poor us. We don't have any money either. You know, that makes me a little insane. And I did say to Mark, I said, remember who was first, Mark, remember who was first. It was a little movie. Please always have room for those little movies. Because if you think that the top of the list, yeah, no, you really, you think back at some of those beautiful gems of movies. They weren't the big ones. They weren't. Look at Moonlight. It was, it was a tiny film. Look at, look at like, I can name God knows how many that we can see. Lady Bird was like, who was in the film that like, you know, of course they had a huge producer. That's a whole different story. But my point is there's some beautiful gems that we would have missed. We really would have missed. And, and, um, you know, I, I, I think this also frees up that world to still tell stories when, you know, the actor doesn't have to be in a cat suit killing villains in, in alien spaceships. You know, we can still tell very human stories by doing things like this, because that's, you know, becoming less and less. If you notice, it's like you just want to see a story that 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 is that is is human and and, it, and it's it's heartwarming and it makes you think and it and it moves you and it causes conversation you know and and if we're just looking at the money aspect yes it doesn't always bring in the big bucks as they believe as they say it is but it's actually not true we have a lot of um comps in our and if you go to freshkillsfilm.com and we talk about some of the the comparable films and they actually can make a lot of money. You just got to give them a chance. You've got to give them a chance because I do think people are craving story. And for you, Mark, obviously, it's an incredibly complex thing to set something like this up for the very first time and to figure out all of the logistical elements, even what you were talking about earlier with securities legislation in different countries, because you're setting this up both with the opportunity for people within the US and outside the US as well. So you're really looking at an international scope for this. What have been some of the aspects of building this that have been challenging for you and your team to navigate as you figure out all of the parameters that you're creating and setting in place? So, um... So in addition to doing this, I'm a, I'm a Wall Street banker. I've been on the street for about 30 years now. And the first thing that's the most important aspect of creating a stock exchange is investor protection. So we had to think of a way and put protections to make sure that all investors have the security, transparency, but really the access to information to be able to make informed decisions. So when we saw blockchain come out, Everybody started jumping on it. We heard about ICOs and, you know, you say blockchain, people think Coinbase and they think Bitcoin, Ethereum, and now everybody's trading the, these coins uh, and Shiba coins and Dogecoin and all these different things. And what's dangerous is those type of opportunities really have no basis. There's no fundamentals. There's nothing underneath it. And there's not access to disclosure. These are, are people that are truly speculating. So what we went out to do was build a marketplace where investors can make informed decisions. There's a prospectus for Fresh Kills. It's going to tell you all the things that could go wrong, all the risk. So you can decide whether this is the right thing for you. It talks about the upside and the potential, but it's fair and balanced. And those were some of the things that we need to look at. And then the other thing that we had to think about is we hear the horror stories of blockchain where somebody has all of their coins on a, on a thumb drive and they lose it and they've lost millions of dollars or they've had somebody hack them. We designed our marketplace. We are a national security stock exchange. So our investors that participate in our marketplace, their cash is insured for 250,000 and FDIC insured accounts. We have all the, the deposits that are held in, in a licensed clearing agency. So if somebody was to lose their stock certificate, it's just like here in the US, you put in an affidavit and you're able to get it replaced. We don't have to worry about those things that come with it. But more importantly, we, the investors don't have to worry about that gen isn't real. Uh, when you look at the NFT market, and, and we laugh about that, but we're starting to see it now. I think we just saw it with the, with the, um, with the coin that came out from, uh, and now I'm totally blanking on it, the, uh, the Korean film uh, show that everybody oh, loves. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, 
I, I loved it too. And I can't even remember what, it, <laughs> but That's the, uh, where they're killing each other. Right. Exactly. So somebody came out, made a scam coin, everybody invested and they all had their money stolen. And those are the type of dangerous things. So when you have a, a marketplace that has investor protections, investor disclosures, investor guardrails, you know that if you're dealing with Jen's movie, it's actually Jen. And it's not somebody that's pretending to be her. And those are some of the important things that we put into place. So it, you, you asked me the question, it was navigating U.S. securities laws. It was navigating international securities laws. You know, each country, each jurisdiction have different rules that you have to work with. This didn't happen overnight. It was three and a half years in making, and it was very sophisticated code. My partner was able to build amazing technology. The one thing that we can do is we can create an NFT in 18 seconds. And we allow investors to come in and use credit cards and debit cards and PayPal. We also take cryptocurrency in the form of a USDC stable coin, but we also take cash. But we made it simple. And if I don't know how much you know about the blockchain, but if you look at some of these other sites, you have to take money and send it to Coinbase and convert it into ETH. And then you have to use MetaMask. Five different steps. It's too confusing. You just want to be a part of a movement and be able to download an app, go through a KYC, and then use your credit card and be a part of Jen's picture and her, her vision. And that's what we designed. Yeah. And speaking of your vision with this film, Jennifer, you know, I want to want to kind of end by asking you about your visualistic style and craft as a filmmaker, because this is your first time making a narrative feature. But filmmaking was actually something that you were interested in even before you stepped into acting, that you initially wanted the opportunity to study, but just weren't able to in college. And so how do you feel that all of these years and all of your experience in the entertainment industry has really been building towards the moment, not just in terms of this project, but also who you are as a filmmaker, especially with all of the filmmakers that you've had the opportunity to collaborate with and to watch how they work and to really be developing your style before you've even stepped behind the camera already? Well, I, I tell you, it's, it's a great question. And someone said to me the other day, who's been close to the project for a while, and she said, when I read it, it reminded me of the girl that I saw in Summer of Sam. It was that, that, that raw, raw emotion being that I saw and it hit me because that is very much who I am and that quality is very much what I wrote so it's like a culmination and I will be clear I could not have written this probably 10 years though 10 years ago this way I started actually 10 years when I finally put pen to paper and then the last five years, it's been nonstop. But that's what I love. And of course, that's what I wanted to get into the business to do when I got a great start with doing plays and then working with someone like Spike Lee is like, you know, and that's the road I wanted to stay on. But you get, as a young girl, I was pushed into like, studio, do this frightening movie, do that, do that, you know, and, and, you, and you get strayed from, who and what you believe in. My heart has always been truthful storytelling, gritty, ugly human behavior, beautiful human behavior. To me, that's magic. That's what I love. So the style of this, the meaning, the essence of all of this, it's literally about this girl trying to find her voice in a male dominated world mafia genre or not that's what it's about it's the journey i had to take to be able to write this it's raw it's going to be real it's going to be authentic i would put myself not i mean not put myself in a category of like spike lee because those are geniuses but if i could lend or go into the world of 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 him and what he's done with new york stories it's a very very New York Bay story, then I'm golden. Um, I see it, I know it, I feel it. I Every bit of it, every 25 years of the bumps and the bruises and the absolute devastation sometimes in this business for me, every single piece led me to this moment. I know that 100%. And I probably couldn't have done the job that I'll be able to do now without any of those experiences. So, yeah. Well, I'm so glad that someone made the introduction 
between the two of you for this opportunity to exist. And I'm so impressed by everything that you've constructed and set up. And I think it is such a great opportunity for the industry to create new pathways and, and to create new opportunities for both audiences and for creators themselves. And can't wait to watch this film and the continued success of this project. Thank, Thank you so much to both of you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Really, we appreciate it.